Welcome back everybody. I'm Randy. This is the 55 Garage and today we'll be talking about VTCS deletion from your intake manifold. VTCS stands for Variable Tumble Control System. And what it is is a set of flappers that are in the intake tract on your intake manifold. And below 3500 RPM, these flappers close causing the air to go over them to tumble which results in better air fuel mixture. So now you understand what it is and what it does, why should you be interested in removing it? Well, even though above 3500 RPMs, the flappers do open allowing more airflow to get past, there is still a little bit of restriction from the bar in the flappers as they are still present inside the intake tract. And since I will be modifying my car with a bigger turbo later on, I will be looking to remove any kind of airflow restrictions. So, since I got the intake manifold out, I'm going to go ahead and remove it. So what's the downside to doing this mod? Well, cold startups for one. Once you do this mod, the flappers are not there to help the air tumble correctly at low RPMs. And during cold startups, your car will run a bit rough until it warms up. Removing the flappers and the bar is a fairly straightforward process. And since I already got the intake manifold off anyway, I figured I might as well go ahead and do it now. So let's get to it. Okay, <clears throat> give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about. This system right here is the VTS. And as you can see, I've already removed um, two of the flappers, but this is basically how the system operates. And below 3500 RPM, these are closed, and then above 3500, they open. Now, as you can see, even though they're open, there's still going to be a little bit of a restriction in here. So, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go ahead and replace this. Now, to get these little flappers off, they have uh, Phillips head bolts. And the two previous ones that I removed, they came out pretty easy. Um, I just used a regular uh, hand screwdriver and just turned them. They did, the heads of them did snap off, but um, I was able to remove one set with the screws, but just to give you an idea, that's the little flapper. And so what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to remove these last two flappers and then remove this bar. And then once I get that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and use some cleaner and clean out my intake manifold. Now, let's turn it and see. I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, but there is a lot of oil deposits that's on the inside of this intake manifold. And as well, that is the tube for the EGR, and it is pretty nasty in there as well. And since I've gone through all this trouble of trying to clean my valves, I want to make sure that this can be as clean as possible before I put it back onto my car. So, I'm going to get started by removing these last two flappers. And like I said, I'm just using a standard Phillips head screwdriver. <clears throat> if anybody's wondering, the drill size I used to drill these out with, it's an uh, eighth inch drill bit. There, as you can see, it doesn't take much. Um, you are using a power tool around an aluminum object, so be very careful. And wear your safety glasses. As you can see, I'm using a little bit of WD-40 on the drill bit. And there it goes. One more. And now you can see all the flappers are removed. Now there is some metal shavings in here and I'm going to get them out when I clean the intake manifold. 
Uh, I also have my air compressor and I'm gonna blow it clean with compressed air. Drilling the screws out, it doesn't take much. You really just want to get down into the head of the bolt and then you'll see it start to spin and then it'll just come off. And then once that's done, you can just go ahead and lift the plates out. And you will end up with four of these. And as you can see, it's got, yeah, it's got a little bit of a oil coating on it. So that was from the EGR and PCV setup. Hopefully I fixed that with the PCV plate and the oil catch can I'll be installing. Next up is we need to take the rod out. And if you can see, there is a nut right here that you have to remove. And once that's out, there's a little retainer in place. And once you get that out of the way, you can just slide this out of the intake manifest. And you'll need an eight millimeter socket to get that bolt out. All right, now that I have removed the bar for my intake, I'm gonna take my intake, some carb cleaner, and clean out the inside of my intake manifold. Now, I'm going to stop the video here and pick it up after I'm done, because it's probably not that interesting and you guys really don't wanna see that. All right, now we're back after cleaning, and as you can see, everything is much cleaner now. During the process, I went ahead and took some sandpaper and very lightly just kind of cleaned up the area around the gasket mating surface just to ensure that I will have a as good as a seal as possible when I go to put this back together. And you can also see over here where the throttle body goes, I went ahead and cleaned that area up as well. So now that you have got the VTCS removed, you've went ahead and you've cleaned your intake, you now have to address some of the things that you need to do to your intake before you can put this on. Now, um, since we have removed the VTCS, the area where the rod goes, you have to fill this with something. Now, some people like to just fill this with JB Weld, um, others, like to take the actual old rod itself and trim the end off and then fit it back in here and then bolt it back in. Um, that's probably what I will end up doing. Down here where we have where the EGR connects, I have a plug for this that I got with my JBR EGR delete kit and I will be installing that there. And the last port that you have to address is this one right here. And this is just a rubber plug that you can pull out. And a lot of people either fill this with JB Weld or they get a 1 8 MPT plug and they tap and then they go ahead and fill this with the plug. So the first thing that we're gonna address now is taking care of this EGR port and trimming the rod so I can fit it back in here. This is the plug that comes with the JBR EGR delete kit. And it's gonna fit into right here. And it takes a number 10 Allen wrench if you have one. And what I'm gonna do is take my thread sealant, put it on here and then screw it in. There is the finished product. For this next step, this is the rod that we took out of the intake manifold. And what I'm gonna attempt to do is cut it right about here using a Dremel. So that way, this little end piece will be the only piece that slides back into the intake manifold. And from there, I will use the 
bolt and the bracket that was on there from the factory in order to retain this to seal that hole up. And since we're going to be using a high speed rotary tool, make sure you are wearing safety glasses. So, I was going to use a Dremel to cut this, but unfortunately that last incident used up my last cutting wheel, so I gotta old school it. Now that we have our trim piece that we just cut, we can now take stock bracket and the bolt and we can fit this back in here. No more restriction in my intake and I have this end sealed up. EGR size sealed up. And the last one is this one on the top. Okay, so what I have here is some JB Will putty. You just gotta mix it together. And I'm not gonna need all of it, but just enough to plug this hole. Here is where I plug it with the JB weld. And it sets in about five minutes, but it takes about 24 hours to cure. So that's where I'm gonna leave this video. I have my intake manifold clean. I have blocked off the EGR port. I have removed the VTCS and I plugged all the holes. This thing's ready to go back on my car. You're going to want to give 12 to 24 hours to let that JB Well cure on your intake before you begin to use it. And also be aware, removing the VTCS from your intake manifold will cause you to throw a check engine code. So make sure you have a Cobb access port and the ATR software to be able to go into your custom map and turn those check engine light codes off. But in a nutshell, that is how I removed the VTCS from my intake manifold and got it prepared to be put back onto my car. Hopefully you all liked the video. If you did, leave me one of these. If you're really enjoying the content that I put on this channel, especially the Mazda 3 content, go ahead, click the subscribe button. Don't forget to click the little bell. You would definitely make my day if you do that. So to recap, we have removed the intake manifold. We have cleaned the valves. We've installed a PCB plate. We've installed an oil catch can and we have removed the VTCS from the intake manifold. We're getting close to the end, but there are still a couple mods that I need to perform, so I better get to it, and I will see you all next time. And the ATR software to be able to go into your custom tune and turn off those check engine codes. One more time.